Okay, our final element of art is texture. And texture is quite a fun one because I often like to relate it to food. If you've watched food programs, they refer to textures in their mouths when they're tasting stuff. And it's very similar in art. It's just about what we're feeling physically with our fingertips, okay? Or visually if we can't actually feel the artwork. So that is the first thing to know. An artwork that we can actually physically touch is called tactile or real texture. So physically touch. So if we look at the examples, if you were in the room with this sculpture of the teacup, you would physically be able to touch it. We can see it's three-dimensional. If you were there, it would have a tactile texture. You would physically be able to touch it. The same with this Play-Doh. The same with these sculptures. The only one that you couldn't physically touch is this drawing, because we know that this drawing is two-dimensional. So if you were to touch it, it would be flat. So that means it's an implied texture. It looks three-dimensional, but it's actually two-dimensional. So it looks 3D, but is 2D. Okay, so if we look at the rest of the words, these are all just descriptors. So some of them you would know, like rough and smooth, metallic, looking like metal, spiky, having sharp edges, soft, maybe fluffy, being similar, Impasto is one that is new to you. This is when paint has a texture. So when you apply paint thickly, we call it impasto. So an artwork like Vincent van Gogh's Starry Night, that has an impasto texture because you can actually see his brush strokes. Porous is something like ceramic that would absorb stuff. It looks like a texture that's dry and it's going to absorb. Slimy is the opposite. It looks like it's wet and oozing. Crumbly, you would know. Spongy, you would know. Leathery, it looks like leather. Papery, it looks like paper. Glassy, it looks like glass. Dimpled is when, if you think of a golf ball or a hockey ball, it's got little incisions into it. So parts of it have been taken out to make little grooves. Stippled is when those grooves are very tiny. So it's been almost punctured with a needle. If you were to take a piece of cardboard and puncture it with a needle many times, that would be stippled. And then embossed is when something is printed into paper or metal. So it's almost like it has been printed like a stamp. That means it's embossed. If I go into the sculpture, for example, you will see this man has tattoos on him that have been embossed. So the texture is created by the embossing. One thing about texture is not to make up words. If, for example, you had an artwork of a pineapple in front of you, it would be spiky, maybe, but not pineapple-y. And I know it sounds funny, but people do make up all sorts of words. So think about it. Can you describe food like this? Could you describe food as fluffy? Yes, a marshmallow can be fluffy. Think about food when you're thinking about texture, but more importantly, remember, don't make up words. The easiest one to go with is, is it tactile or implied? Then you can start describing different types of textures. That is the end of elements.